Hey guys, so as most of you know, obviously I work at Harlequins. I used to do all my training there uh, at a gym that I was lucky enough to design myself, so I managed to sneak some strongman kit in. But we moved house recently, about a couple of months ago. It gave me a chance to build my own kind of home gym, which is what everyone, everyone really wants. It's been a kind of dream of mine since, since I really started training, you know. I'm pretty uh, solitary when I train, I like to train on my own, uh, so I tend to tend to want to have my own space. So that's exactly what we did when we got to the new place. We had a, a, a car barn, like a double car barn, uh, I managed to convert it into, uh, into my own home gym. So, give you a quick tour of the, uh, the home gym and show you what I've got in it. So, first things first, we come in uh, and we've got the monolift. Uh, um, really didn't actually need to have this in here, but it's got a bit of sentimental value, really. I've got this from uh, Loughborough University, where I used to used to train, obviously where I studied, uh, and the price was too good to turn it down. So top tip for you: if, if there's kit going cheap, always buy it and then work out what to do with it later. So I mean, this thing was an absolute pig to put in. I mean, it took three of us to lift this top upright into position. Anyone who's like training on a monolift before uh, or had to put one together, you know how heavy they are. It's proper solid steel. It was a, uh, a real bastard to put together, but well well worth it. Uh, for guys who don't know what a monolift is, it's obviously like a squat rack. Uh, the difference is obviously it's adjustable. You can go up and down on the piston here. Um, it's a different rack height. You can do that with the weight on, which is the big advantage when you're squatting with someone a lot shorter than you and you're going in between rack heights. And plus, you don't have to walk it out. So you stand up, these swing out and there's no walking about. So it's basically squatting for lazy people, which is what we all are. So yeah, the monolift. Got a couple of specialty bars on the corner here. So I've got my deadlift jack from uh, Myra Fit, who sorted me out with that. Uh, and I've also got this kind of open, open uh, trap bar, uh, which was given to me by Sportess, and that's a pretty cool little variation bar. I'm uh, just trying to work out the best place to kind of store that because it's pretty big at the moment. Probably seen these in a couple of my videos, these are the silver dollar deadlift frames. So these go onto the end of a barbell, uh, similar to silver dollar deadlift. So for those who don't know, a silver dollar deadlift is a very classic strongman event. It originated with like two boxes, the bar was set at 18 inches off the floor. The, the boxes were filled with like silver dollars uh, and it was basically done that way in terms of weight and they just chucked more and more money in until no one could pull it. So it is a specific strongman event, uh, it's not necessarily cheating. Uh, going from a higher position, but yeah, you should expect like bigger, bigger weights on that. I think the world record at the moment's 540, and I'll be looking to take that whenever I get the opportunity. So we're moving on to the kind of staple of any other good gym, which would be a lifting platform. Uh, so I've got a solid platform here. Once again, all the flooring and pull-out platform was done by the boys at Sportest. They even like printed my logo onto the actually directly on, so that's not a sticker, that's printed directly onto the uh, onto the wood, which is cool. And I've got my squat rack here as well, so it's just a standard half rack. The half rack allowed me to get a bit more space in it, it's not the biggest, I think we're looking at about 5.7 meters by 5.7 meters. So using a half rack was a good option for me, it meant I could kind of get all the versatility of a power rack without having to have a load of space taken up by it. So like, here's like a little bit of a uh, little bit of gym porn, plate porn for you boys. I've got the original like Vanco chromed powerlifting plates, the slimline calibrated ones. I don't think they make these anymore, which I'm gutted about. Uh, the only ones I'm missing is some 50s. So if anyone wants to give me some chromed 50s, that'd be really nice. Uh, but yeah, we've got the uh, 25s, 20s, 15s in those. I managed to grab these second hand, even managed to get a couple new, which was really, really rare. They'd been sitting in a box in a container for a, a wee while. Uh, and then below that, I've got the uh, the bumpers. Avanco again, like I used Avanco's like all my lifting career. Uh, I think it's great kit. You know, I, I, when I was a player, it was the first set of plates I was using in the gym was like Avanco bumpers. So I've got a bit of a soft spot for their kit. Yeah, that's why I've kind of filled the gym with with these plates. But yeah, these are the daddies. These are the nuts and nuts of plates. Everyone probably thinks barbells are barbell. You are completely wrong. And your real geeky meatheads will uh, scoff at you that one. But. Yeah, going from kind of like left to right here, we've got a uh, Texas squat bar, uh, we've got a deadlift bar, 
Got a uh, Titex like IPF approved bar, a Texas Power Bar, and then just a uh, Evanco weightlifting bar. So the squat bar, for those who don't know, it's 25 kilos, it's, uh, it's eight foot long. It's a lot more space between the collars, so for the bigger guys, it's a lot easier to get into. A deadlift bar, obviously we're using that with the world records the, the whole time. Still weighs 20 kilos, a little bit thinner, aggressive knurling, so it will rip your hands apart. Uh, but a little bit more flex as well, so it really kind of helps with the pull. The first time I pulled on a, a Texas deadlift bar or similar, I actually pulled like 20 kilos below my PB because trying to get used to that whip is uh, is like it throws you off massively. Uh, the Titex IPF bar is a standard like for the purists. That's an actual the only bar they should be using. Very very stiff, no flex in it really at all. Comes in at about 29 mil. Yeah, I love this bar. It's one of my favourites. Using this a lot on my deadlifts at the moment making it a lot harder. Like the difference between putting on a deadlift bar and a IPF approved bar is insane. Just because the the weight is coming directly off the floor as soon as you start pulling, as opposed to with a deadlift bar, you've got to pull the flex out of the bar, which means your hips are in a much higher position. That's why pulling on a deadlift bar is a lot easier. Texas Power Bar is just your staple. I think this is the first, first bar I've ever bought, still going strong. This is the one I abuse with rat pulls and dropping it on the pins and stuff. Uh, and you know, for, for value for money, they're pretty good. Um, as a general barbell and then just the weightlifting bar with obviously it's specialist chrome like a softer knurling uh, so you don't rip your hands up uh, I use this for my kind of Olympic lifting uh, and any push pressing I want a little bit of whip I've got probably one of the world's thickest axle bars here that I use for a bit of grip work so that's a three inch uh, diameter bar for the grip and then I've got my safety squat bar here as well so that's another one from Sport Test. They sorted me out with that one. And on the floor, we've got some uh, some more strongman gear. So I've got my Pollens wheels uh, from Roman Strength. They're set at 15 inch. So once again, specialist strongman, you need specialist kit. Got those when we have axle clean and presses or deadlifts. Got my log as well. My buddy Rob Frampton's actually lent me this for a bit in the Bullets of Brits. And that is an absolutely awesome log. Uh, comes in at like 80 kilos. So some people always ask like why we have the tape around the middle. And that's just to, to add a little bit of grip. Uh, instead of dumping chalk on it the whole time, just if we put a little bit of like zinc oxide tape on it in the middle, just gives it a little bit of grip when you uh, when you clean it. And then we've got the other half of the gym. So you notice the top top part of that gym, we've had the roof taken out, so I've got kind of uh, I've got a room to be able to press above head. This side we've left it in, so we've still got some storage upstairs, which is our kind of dumping ground for life stuff. This side I've got my uh, farmer's walk handles once again. Rob sent me those for a bit. And then I've got this funky barbell I've got made up for dumbbell rows. So it's a proper cut and shut job. It's an old limpet bar that we, we cut up and, and weld in the middle so that I've got a bar long enough for like some really heavy single arm rows. Uh, so we can load that up as, as heavy as we want for, for single arm rows. I've got the token cardio corner, I've got the uh, the rowing machine and I've got the, the spin bar. This is like really kind of the, the, uh, the girlfriend's corner. She's got, she's got a spin bike, she needs to be on there for hours, and then we've got the little dumbbells here and the kettlebells, we had to do a little workouts. So yeah, we had to give her something really, didn't we? It was part of the deal of getting the gym together. Another plate stack. So I've got the, the, the plates I tend to use for the log. I've got some other spare sorted plates down the bottom here. Uh, just some ones that get abused. A couple more bars. So I've got some inch bars here, just with uh, some thick grip, like easy bars, uh, just for like general upper body work. Dumbbells, once again, have gone through Bancos. I, I, I personally just like the kit, the way it feels. Got kind of 14 kilos through to, to 60 kilos in those. Um, I'll probably get another couple when funds allow, just to maybe go up to 70 or 80 for my work. At the moment, this is all good for me. So probably like the most uh, expensive like single item I've actually got in here is probably the, uh, the Stone of Steel, just because of how much it cost me to get it into the UK. Unfortunately, they are expensive. They're only made in America at the moment, so I had to get it shipped, which wouldn't have been a problem if you could put it on a boat in a container, but a single item like that, I had to get it air mailed. So that cost a lot of dollars. For me, it was a good bit of kit to have in, you know, didn't, at the time didn't have a lot of time to, to go and train stones and using stones and setting up a tack, it takes a long time. So if I'm, I'm rushed for time with work and stuff, I can still get some work done on the stone of steel. So obviously that comes apart and I can put plates plates in the middle of it. So that's a, a great little addition to the gym and it saves me a little bit of time if I'm a bit rushed in my work day. Uh, I've got a couple of sandbags here. So for conditioning work, so I've got a couple of 100 kilo sandbags here and then I've got a big 160 that I bought, haven't filled up yet. All in all, probably with the setup here from where it was before, I mean, from an open barn and, and uh, my mate JT came down and put everything in, insulated it, put the windows in, doors on and then with the kit all in we're probably looking at not including the kit I already had probably looking about nine grand uh, just to get the setup here but 
you know, for me that's invaluable. I'm invested in myself and it's something I've always really wanted. And by the competitors, like some of the other competitors, that's like a tiny amount, you know. So you want to be in this game, you've got to have like a lot of the kit, a lot of specialty kit, you're going to have to spend some money uh, unless you're fortunate enough to have someone who's going to sponsor you and then chuck a load of money in or a gym that's going to look after you. But this is, this is my gym, this is my, uh, my home gym. The perfect thing is it's like two minutes uh, from finishing my session to walking up to the fridge and getting some food. So it's, it's going to make a massive difference for me this year from, from how I was training before. So I hope you guys liked it. And comment below, tell me what kit you think I should get in here. What things should I get which will massively improve it, improve the gym in it.